these two are supposed to be working for me. They're about the worst enemies I've ever had. I never asked for my life to become a great story. But that's what's happening here. It's not going to end well for you. If you think you're good enough to outdo a man, that's what you do. Clark, Jeff in Las Vegas, buddy. How are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for talking to me today. Oh, you got like the you get like the press tour uh, backdrop going. You got the poster and everything. Well, I did, man. I'm prepared. <laughs> hey, uh, before we get started, I, I need to clear something up with you. Sure. So I'm only going to say this once. So uh, no, listen the. F up. You listening? <laughs> I'm the boss. You may never refuse an order, and you may never quit. If you decide to run, I will hunt you down and kill you, no matter how much I've grown to like you. You're not allowed to bring girls around, and you're never allowed to make a fool out of me. <laughs> so I so wanted to get that clear right up front. Are you cool with that? Fair enough. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was a little, the first two or three seconds there, I was a little concerned. <laughs> I, I just... forgot to go. Wait a minute. I have to go. <laughs> and, and scene. There we go. <laughs> I think, in my opinion, that's along the lines of Jules' speech in Pulp Fiction. That is going to be you know, the quintessential quote in movie history. I really do. And then once, you know, once Malkovich said it and then Vince Vaughn said it later on, I'm like, I'm getting my pen out. I'm like, I've got to write this down because That's that awesome. is just Thank the you. best. It really is. So Thank you. I get that. Thank you. That's very nice to hear. Uh, I hope people enjoy, I mean, I hope people enjoy the entire movie, but the dialogue, uh, yeah, the dialogue was when I first read the book, what I, one of the things I love so much about the, about the whole story. So I'm glad that's resonating with people. And you optioned the book like 10 years ago. So it's been a, a long journey for the Dixie Mafia to make it to the big screen, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty common story for anybody making an indie film, but it's been, it's been a long road, man. It's been, it came out today on my birthday, which is pretty surreal. So uh, Today's your birthday? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, happy birthday. I feel honored. Cinco de Mayo, everything, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and raising money and uh, casting, has it was it just an impossible journey or... It, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the nightmare of any kind of indie film is um, it's this chicken and egg scenario where, like, nobody wants to finance the movie unless you have actors attached and no actors want to attach unless you already have financing. So it's this crazy, you're just in this impossible situation for a long time until somebody decides to basically put their neck out for you. And for us, that was that was Liam, Liam Hemsworth. Um, Liam was the first person that, that said he wanted to do it, and that, that's the reason there's a movie. And Vince Vaughn, I think, gives his career performance. Uh, there was so much going on with him with just his thinking. Like in the pawn shop, when they come up trying to buy a gun, mm -hmm. his, his looks. He's not saying anything, but you're, I'm trying to figure out what's he thinking. Am I going to shoot these guys? Do I trust these guys? He says so much in this movie without saying a word. And I think this is his best performance. That's, uh, that, that's my, that, that might be my favorite scene in the whole movie. I think that one's really great um, because just, just everything you said, like both those guys, Liam and Vince, are doing so much um, without talking. You know, just the looks between the two of them. Um, and then my character's just dumb and oblivious, but that's, that's fun too. But yeah, I, I think Liam and Vince both, it's, it's like it's uh, some of the best acting either one of them's ever done. And being the director on this film, tell me about the first shot on the first day and the last shot on the last day. Uh, the first shot on the first day was actually the scene where me and uh, Liam meet each other. That crane shot where his car pulls up and he is also one of the only crane shots in the movie. So it was like, oh man, we're really starting hot here like with a, a tricky thing to do. Um, but it was kind of good because it's sort of like starting with a, a kind of hard, hard shot kind of builds morale maybe. Um, but yeah, weirdly enough, the uh, the very first scene, the very first shot of the movie was the shot where he and I meet. In the very last scene, the very last shot um, was when I say uh, bye to him at the bathhouse, like when I'm looking at him and give him that smile. So it was, uh, and it just that wasn't planned. It just kind of happened that way. Um, but that was that was pretty wild. Like we started the movie with our characters meeting and ended it with them saying bye to each other. And the movie looks fantastic. You, you must have searched high and low for the perfect DP for the film. Yeah, I, Steven Meisler was our, our DP and he, um, 
he's absolutely fantastic. I had, uh, I had seen Godless, the, the, the Netflix series that he had shot, and I thought it was, um, it was so beautiful and how he did it without uh, almost any light. Um, that Godless was one of the darkest visually things in a good way that I'd ever seen on TV. Cause you know, it's set in like the old West with no electricity and on and on. And they just like, they just did it. Um, and one of the coolest things for, for Arkansas was we use almost all natural light. Like we barely used any lights in the movie just because we knew we had such, uh, such a small amount of time and so much stuff to shoot that the only way we were going to be able to do is if we could move really fast. And a lot of times on set, um, you know, camera and lighting is, is kind of what takes up so much of your time waiting on lighting setups. Um, you know, they could be easily an hour for each setup. So his would be five minutes. Like I couldn't go smoke a cigarette and come back. Like, I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, and he's, he's a big reason that a, the movie looks as fantastic as it does. Um, and, and that we were able to do it at all logistically. And the production design, it's got such Southern charm. Uh, when we go into the pawn shop, it reminded me of Quint Shack in Jaws. There was so much detail. Yeah. And if you ever read the script for Jaws, none of that stuff is it's in there. It's just production design. And so that, that pawn shop was just amazing. It goes a long way. Um, production design is huge. And our, our designer, Scott, did a great job. But we also, um, you know, one of the, that's one of the good things about shooting on location somewhere. Like, this was not a movie shot on a soundstage. You know, we're, we're down in Alabama and Arkansas in real places. And that was, a, that was just a real place we found. And it's like, you can't, you know, we had, to, we had to take some stuff out and remove some stuff to make it period appropriate. But, I mean, it'd be hard. You'd be hard pressed to, like, build a place that looked as real as, as that. But um, at the same time, I say that, and then frogs... Uh, pawn shop in the present day that's the one that's at his house um, our team built that entire uh, that entire porch on that house and decked all that um, yeah so shout out to, to Scott and Laura and then John Malkovich is a park ranger I was cracking up and then that torture scene I had to turn away like three times I couldn't oh, watch good. It. yeah is that what you wanted that is what I wanted and that's why it's it's a wonder there's no cuts in it because um, I I didn't want you to have anywhere to kind of escape to. Like, you just have to watch it. Um, so, yeah, that, that was intentional. I'm glad that, that worked well for you. And that shot where he reaches in the drawer for the gun and there's condoms in there, too? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's, magnums, yeah that's, just, magnums or? <laughs> that's just more great. Uh, that's your production designer stunting a little bit. Tell me about Swin's rings, because you have all these rings on during the movie. Are they your personal rings, or do they have some backstory? Yeah, actually, all the, the rings... Uh, the two main rings I wear were my grandfather's. Um, one was his high school ring, and then one, the big diamond horseshoe, was uh, was just his personal ring. He, he had a, a, we still have it. The the family uh, farm is a cattle ranch, and then the big giant um, bull's head one that I wore on the pinky, our costume designer Ashley Heathcock actually uh, designed and made for me because uh, I made the character's last name Horn. Horn is my my mother's maiden name. And my last name, my grandfather's rings I was wearing. Uh, so yeah, there it was. You know, that's not anything anybody would know watching the movie. But yeah, all the uh, all that stuff had like a lot of personal uh, connection for me. And you know, when I grad, I'm Generation X. So when I graduated from high school in 1984, a year later I started my own video store. And by the time I got out in 1991, I sold them all, went back to school, I went to film school at UNLV. But I had five video stores, you know, right out of high school. So I saw stuff, Stephanie, in the refrigerator. I was seeing all those movies you had that you were watching. And I yeah. was like, I know all of those films. We have oh, all the ones that Vince watches in the movie. The exactly, movie. yeah. So you had yeah, yeah. Stephanie and the Incinerator. I'm like, I haven't heard yeah. of that title in 30 years. So you showed up. They're all trauma films. Trauma right. was awesome. They they really support um, indie film and first time filmmakers, and they they gave us all those for basically no money, um, which was so so cool of them. Because I mean, just the VHS box art alone on those is they're so tremendous. And right away with the music, I knew it was the Flaming Lips. I heard, I'm like, there's no other, it couldn't be any other group. And that yeah. just gave such a cool, mellow kind of vibe to the movie. Yeah, I think it really, um, it, it changed, or not changed, but it enhanced the tone of the movie in such a huge way. Um, the score is by Devendra Bonhart, who's also a brilliant musician and one of my favorites. But yeah, getting the lips to do all the music, it, it kind of, um, it gave the movie such a kind of a spooky edge, I thought. And, and it's, it makes it cohesive and, and pulls it together. But yeah, I'm thrilled with that. I'm trying to 
we're trying to figure out the logistics of all the record labels and stuff involved to put out a, a soundtrack release at some point. So hopefully before the year's out, we'll see that. You put so much time and energy into this movie, a decade long worth of work and, yeah. and South by Southwest was canceled and you were showing it with the audience for the first time. So how about that disappointment? That's the hard, that's been the hardest part is just, I haven't, I haven't got to see it with an audience period. Cause I mean, you know, South by was going to get, be our, our premiere um, and being a Southern guy, that was, that was the festival I was most wanted to have my, my first film at. Um, and then, you know, we were supposed to have be in theaters too right now, uh, just in general. So that's, that's been hard. Yeah. That's, that's been the, the most like bittersweet um, kind of part of the whole deal. But my hope is, you know, everybody's stuck at home. They need stuff to watch. Um, I, I know we're already, I think it already looked like we were doing well on iTunes today. The movie just came out this morning and we were already charting really well on iTunes and they've made us their, uh, the editor's pick there on, on Apple TV. So they've been great. And all the, all the platforms, Amazon, everybody, all the cable and satellite providers have been really, uh, really great and supportive throughout. So, you know, hopefully people still find it. Um, it would have been nice. I mean, just for me personally, the South by thing was like a bucket list thing, but maybe uh, hopefully on the, on the next movie. Uh, well, you know, uh, you, the last time we spoke was the sex drive uh, junket. You know, I interviewed you for that. For oh, time. man. It's been so long. And it's so yeah. funny when I, I, I didn't even recognize you at first in the movie. I'm like, who is this? Good. Guy? And then it, that was my goal. Good. Yeah. I mean, it didn't look like you at all, you know? And then I went, oh, my God, that's Clark. That's, that's him. I mean, maybe a good 15, 20 minutes before I realized who you were. Uh, that's, that makes me feel really happy because that was, that was exactly my intention. Was, um, I, I almost, it was for me to compartmentalize and kind of uh, help me to become that character. But also, I didn't want to be a distraction uh, to the audience. Because you, you carry around a lot of baggage from other movies. You know, people have a... a a preconception of you that they they bring and sometimes that's good sometimes that's fun to play with like with Vince Vaughn playing frog you know part of the fun of it is you're seeing Vince Vaughn play this character this type of character but for me I just um yeah I just kind of wanted to like disappear into it a little so I hope I did I'm glad you feel that way you did you did and, and just remember Halloween is for Baptists just like <laughs> that's one of my favorite lines that was in what? the book I, I don't I to be honest I'm not even sure what it means I just uh I just loved it it's awesome, man. It's one of my favorite films of the year. And uh, I, if it had the effect on me at home versus being in a theatrical experience, I mean, you got nothing to worry about. So, I, From your mouth to God's ears, man. Yeah, it's, it's a surreal uh, it's a surreal day today on a lot of levels. <laughs> the birthday and the movie and just some, just been a bundle of nerves, you know. Like it's just uh, every, everything hitting at once. Well, happy birthday, and uh, when Vegas reopens, you got to come visit us, man. we got to go have a drink and talk about the movie. Uh, I'd love to. I was supposed to, I was supposed to be there this month. for. Uh, I was going to come to the AEW uh, Double or Nothing show, the big uh, pro wrestling show they're doing at the MGM Grand. They did last year, and we're going to make an annual thing. Um, yeah, I'd love to. I don't think I've been to Vegas since the uh, – I came for the – I got to go to the Mayweather, uh, oh, yeah. Mayweather McGregor fight. That was uh, unreal. I can't tell you how many times I rehearsed that opening speech. I had a down pat and then I flubbed it. I messed it up. Oh, you nailed it. Oh, did I? Okay. Good. That makes me feel better. You needed, you needed fewer takes than Vince did. That was great. <laughs> well, thanks so much, man. I, I really appreciate your time and uh, good luck with the film and happy birthday, dude. Thanks, man. Likewise, um, I appreciate you helping me spread the word because that's, that's how this thing will be successful. So thank you so much.